God, the like yesterday was not as bad as it could have been. So let's see. Uh, we're going to start out with some news for you, everybody. So basically, and I will pull up the, the chats to see if we have any questions along the way. And uh, let's see, that's not turning on for me. But uh, let's see if we can figure this out. So where is the chat? Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm uh, remote today. I got uh, stuck out of town at some meeting. So, all right. Guess I can't overlay this. Questions. All right. So I tell you what, let's come back to that. I'm going to go through the um, the news here. I think that's what most people want to know. What happened yesterday? Lots of different variables, of course. And many of you are already familiar with what happened yesterday. And we're going to start out with the Bank of Japan and how the Bank of Japan wrecked the yen carry trade. Essentially, what happened is Bank of Japan was lending money out at 0% interest all over the world. And there was a very large trading company called Jump Trading a very large company, lots of positions that was borrowing yen at 0% interest in buying crypto and buying lots of different investments, including stock market, et cetera. So when the Bank of Japan said, hey, actually, we need to raise the interest rates on all that money. And suddenly, uh, you know, there were margin calls and the jump trading basically had to start dumping positions to cover these marginal margin trade, um, you know, uh, margin calls that either were being called or were imminent. They suddenly said, we got to dump everything to survive. I did hear that there's a federal investigation underway uh, into these guys. So, you know, um, could there be some more backlash? Possibly. Uh, we're going to go through that. And so I'll tell you what, let me just give you the overview because we had actually uh, posted one yesterday and um, my partner, Mike, actually had a pretty good um, overview of this that I'll just relay if I can find that here. And I think I cover most of the hot points. Let's see, this is in our M3 Act Trader group. And if you guys are in that, maybe it was in our Retire Rich group. But um, well, let's see. Yeah, here, basically, this is a TLDR on that in our Retire Rich uh, group that uh, we posted this in. So I'll just unpack this a little bit. Where did that go? So essentially, huge liquidations caused by jump trading. As I'm reading here, another massive market maker selling a ton of their ETH during an illiquid weekend. Of course, there's a lot less liquidity over the weekend. And so that was part of it. The Bank of Japan had 0% interest rates. And as I said, or huge trading firms would go borrow yen at super low rates, convert it to cash, and then trade. Once the bank unexpectedly raised rates, these guys seem to have been caught with their proverbial pants down with highly leveraged and needed to sell down anything illiquid over the weekend to cover their margin calls on regular stocks after Friday's big drop in the stock market. So that big drop in the stock market was the catalyst number one. And then Bank of Japan number two and jump trading kind of having to dump a lot of their positions. Uh, SEC has a probe into them. So the rumor between these two things, they might be just exiting the crypto business entirely. And so it's not clear have they sold all of their positions uh, or not. The massive selling positions over the weekend and the last week Pause liquidation after liquidation and has almost certainly cleared the leverage out of the system. So that's the good news. Clearing the leverage out of the system is always a good thing. And it's just a question of if the stocks continue to get beat up, if crypto follows. But we did have a nice bounce yesterday, even after the Japanese stock index, considering how low they opened. The Japanese uh, had their biggest percent in point drop since 1987, I heard. And um, and so um, all I'll add to that is, see, there was one comment I wanted to add to that. Yeah, the liquidation. So what happens with these things, and I'll jump over to a chart really quick. Let's see. Uh, here we go. What happens on these is when one liquidation happens, it'll trigger stop losses. Sometimes it's the other way around. And then that leads to more liquidations and more stop losses. So this doesn't show it was really that bad yesterday. It recovered nicely. And uh, what I am encouraged by, by the way, is that we came back into this trading channel. Now, for the last couple of weeks, we were calling this a bull flag. There is an issue with that, and I want not to get ahead of ourselves, but this is now a downtrending channel. It's gone too long for a bull flag, okay, I believe. So I still think the pattern coming out of this is bullish. If we can, if we can continue this balance and get it back above this, and this might take a little while, you guys. So I'm going to put it back on a weekly, but essentially... Um, I think we do drift sideways, bounce around a bit and chop around a bit before eventually breaking higher, probably into September when the big traders come back. And then we could see some nice 
uh, attempts to break, finally break through on the upper boundary here. Now we've been talking about the fourth or fifth attempt, sorry, the third or fifth attempt is usually the big one. It's interesting on the weekly basis, it's a little bit more clear if we aggregate these. So attempt one, two, and three. So there's a lot of uncertainty in this range. I think the big overall TLDR here and takeaway is we're just going to have to be patient. And it's probably going to be into September when we start seeing things rise and October before we see a potential break higher, I would imagine. So just depending on how long things take to sort out, uh, the end of the market cycle, probably later in August. Uh, I am encouraged, though, by this candle here on a weekly basis. We need to see and watch carefully how this weekly candle closes. You see, whenever you see a large sell-off, and we'll get back to the news in a moment, um, I, don't, I don't panic because I want to see how we recover. And look at how well we recovered on this. Sold off, liquidations, stop losses, boom. But the buyers came back in. And I'm, I'm going to share a trade that I put in yesterday. And I actually put in two days ago with some limit buy orders. And uh, that's turning out very nicely. So you can make great profits on these bounces if you have buy orders in at these lower levels, which I did on Solana. And uh, and so so, but this candle is very encouraging on this weekly time frame, and I do encourage you to pay attention to the weekly time frames, and uh, we will sort of use our indicators as well. But I wanted to get that out of the way and continue the kind of what happened, on uh, you know so narrative. But uh, let's see, you know this, put this away, and sorry guys, I'm not in the war station here. I've got uh, the working remotely. Uh, we will be back in the office tomorrow for our M3 Active Trader class. And there's where I want to be. Okay, so the Bank of Japan, how they wrecked the yen carry trade. We've, we've pretty much covered that. But basically, um, crypto market, we lost 15% of its value over the weekend. The total market cap, we'll look at that as well. And, uh, you know, thank you. It says, thank you, Bank of Japan, for playing a starring role. And you can see this graphic here of the yen sort of battling it out with whatever this is, the rest of the world. So, um, but, but yeah, there was one of the worst days in years that happened uh, yesterday. And uh, actually... August 5th. So where are we? Yeah. So if you saw it coming, well, we saw it coming. And I'm going to talk about that too, you guys. We, we've been, I've been telling people to get out of this market. And, and uh, even over the weekend, I was saying, really consider getting into cash because Monday is going to be tricky. And uh, as it was, but even last week, when we failed to break new highs the fifth time on a daily time frame, I've been telling people in my M3 Active Trader class, and you guys, many of you are here that generally it's the third or fifth attempt at a breakout that works. Otherwise, we have trouble. And we did reject that last week, the fifth attempt, right after the Bitcoin conference, where Bitcoin shot up to 70K and promptly rejected. We could see those sell order blocks on there with our indicators. And, and I'm curious to see if they are still there. I think probably they uh, still are. But actually, I'm not seeing those. This is interesting. Um, what's interesting is all of that sell pressure up here seems to have disappeared, which would at some level give us a green light for going higher. I will say this, though, and I just pointed this out in the, one of our private chats. Um, our order block detector is on an exchange by exchange basis. So I recommend always looking at it on various exchanges. So here we have Bitstamp and we do still see the sell order blocks. Now, these to clarify, these are orders limit sell orders on the order books of Bitstamp where people will be selling their uh, Bitcoin. They have orders to sell at that 70K and that midpoint of 71K. So we're going to see some more sell pressure. And you know, really we, we've, been, we've been watching this deteriorate for weeks, if not months, all the way back into March and April when we rejected here and put in a lower high. And then again, here on the May, that was the third attempt. The fourth attempt was a bit of a fake out, kind of rep reminiscent of a Wyckoff pattern where they'll have this sign of strength and breakout and then it failed. And then, of course, this fifth uh, attempt at the high, when this rejected end of July, back on July 29th, I was saying, guys, this does not look good. This candle here, this uh, topping tail indicates further downside. And so if we also put on our early reversal indicator, Guys, if you're watching this and you don't have our pro pack indicators, you can see now why you need them. And not to sound self-serving, but you're at a huge disadvantage. 
it's like peeking behind the curtain from the Wizard of Oz and see what's really happening there because we could see all of this cell pressure up in this range. We had not one, but two of our early reversal signals. Now, this was an accidental discovery that uh, we made and we didn't really know why it was working so well. I was I noticed a pattern on an oscillator we had, but essentially this is picking up on, we're following the footsteps of the ele elephants or the other analogy, those little sucker fish on the whales and sharks. I will just use the whale as example, let's latch onto the whales. Uh, you, you know, they're, they're the ones we wanna be following. So what we are picking up by these red arrows uh, in the actual oscillator is uh, institutional buying and selling, programmatic selling in this case. And so, and you guys know, when we look at it on a weekly time frame, that is our bear market signal. And I had called that back in here when we had actually was back in here when we saw a bit, this big drop, I believe. So, so uh, let me just turn that over to weekly so you guys are following. No, it, yeah, it was right here. So we got that signal. We forecast that this big drop on this with this setup, bearish early reversal indicator, bearish engulfing candle on a weekly time frame, and there's a couple other signals. So um, if you're watching the YouTube channel and you want to know where to get these signals, you can find out more about that at our website, moonstream.io. And you can scroll down here and look at these uh, indicators of crypto mastery. But the new, uh, actually the new pro pack, the pro indicators are not linked to there yet. And all you have to do is go to optionsmastery.org slash pro and um, go there. Make sure you write down uh, let's see, what did I do here? I did options. I used to have a company called the Options Options University, so sometimes I still get that mixed up. And so crypto mastery.org. Trying to go fast for you guys so you don't get bored. Um, go look at this, bookmark this, and I'll put it in the chat, or Myrene, if you can put it in the chat. Um, when we get off today, go watch this video for full training on these signals because these have been giving us the advanced warnings for these big drops like this last couple of days. So if you're watching today and you got get side, um, you know, kind of um, cur uh, what's right, side uh, curveballed by this big market drop, we were seeing this happening, playing it out and talking about this over the last few weeks in our M3 Active Trader Group. And uh, you can find out more about that also on moonstream.io slash, uh, just moonstream.io and then slash M3 for M3 Active Trader. That's the other thing you want to go look at. If you really want expert help with this, and you want help, have my help navigating through these markets. We've been very good at calling these market tops and swing tops. This was been, or this was a really hard one, but we got it. We talked about this and you could have gotten out back here. Some of you did, some of my private clients did get out here. So enough about that, but I do want to just point out uh, those two things. Um, if you are, if you're looking at these buy sell blocks, you know, check the other exchanges because the data we pull comes from the exchanges. So Coinbase, for some reason, is not showing the sell order blocks. I don't know why that is. Maybe maybe they are planning to buy them up if we get up in that range. Sometimes we don't really know, but we, we have to be like Sherlock Holmes and look for clues. Let's look at Binance. Binance also showing sell pressure uh, up in this area. And so we want to be careful as we come back up in this area on all of these charts, this is a good swing trade, but let me just tell you, in my mind, I'm not going to be long. If I'm, if we come up in this range or when we do, I'll be selling my Bitcoin and crypto. I have, I have Bitcoin that I'll never sell. And it's on a hard wallet, but to be able to sell here and buy back lower is the name of the game. And until and unless we clear this area, then I'm not going to be going fully long in crypto. I'm not going to be buying anything other than swing tradings and swing trades. So basically, we can see that here. And now here's some more good news though. We are oversold on our trend strength indicator and we're getting a bullish RSI on our pro pack signals. So what specifically would I be looking for to get back in this market? Well, I'd like to see a bullish ERI here, this green arrow. Now, of course, these have to occur with in conjunction and confluence with our other signals or we can ignore them. This here was not enough to get in because the TSI was still red and the RSI was still red and going lower. When we see confluence in our signals like this green arrow and the TSI going from red to green right here and, and this also going red. So if you can count to three, one, two, three, if you have those, then you have a green buy signal. And on the downside, if you have three red signals, like it was clear as day, we had a bearish early reversal indicator on July 24th. 
we had our trend strength indicator going red and then finally dropping below 80 here. But we had we had the bearish ERI and the RSI bearish divergence here on the RSI Pro. So right in here, even though the reason it's always obviously it's always easy to spot this in hindsight. Uh, there was a lot of bullish talk that things were going to be happening at the bullish uh, at the Bitcoin conference. Rather here, there was you know, massive enthusiasm. People bought into it. But once we saw this, we knew it was coming back down, at least at a high confidence that was the case. And certainly that was true. Guys, I've learned to trust these indicators. And the more and more we use them, the more and more confident I am. If nothing else, if you just trade it off of these arrows and in these buy sell zones, you could do very well as a trader. So we're here to give you the tools to succeed, take the mystery out of all this. And uh, so I'm going to jump into some questions in a minute, but um, I, I do want to get through the news. But this is the high level on this. Where are we now? Well, unfortunately, we did put in a lower low. And so we have to see how this plays out in in the next couple of weeks. So we're getting a bit of a dead cat bounce here. But the other indicator that I'm going to show you at this red block, this is this is actual heavy selling. This is probably where uh, some liquidations took place. So whereas these are the red box up here is where there are sell orders, there's future sell pressure. This was a sell block, meaning heavy sell pressure. And we don't see really any buyers down to this $46,000 level. So this is still in the cards, everybody. We could push up a little bit and drop down to that 46 k level. We are not out of the woods. And similarly, these green blocks down here is heavy buying order flow. So you can see this was a great indicator to get into this market when the actual money flow, a lot of big money came in and preceded this big price move going higher. Okay, So you can see we've got excellent tools here to help you guys win. All right, so we'll come back to that. I want to finish the news here. And, uh, and yeah, this is a good analogy. If, an, if leverage trading was the kindling, people borrowing a margin, if that was the kindling, the Japanese yen abrupt uptrend was the match. And if you put those two together, it's just thankfully the fire may burn out as quickly as it started. We're starting to see that. So, you, you know, um, I, I think in the end, this could be a very positive event, ex, you know, except for those leverage traders that got burned out, blown out, liquidated, wrecked. And that's the problem with leverage. If you see something like this in the markets, there's a lot of people that got wrecked. And that means they they went to zero in their accounts because they borrowed money, then it all went away. The reason I say it's good news is that this is kind of what the Fed needs to see or the Fed is watching and uh, in, in terms of doing uh, extra rate cuts. So there is, uh, I think it was Professor Siegel from the Wharton's Business School came out publicly yesterday calling for an emergency three-quarter point rate um, cut and another three-quarter point rate cut in the next meeting. Now, that is very unlikely, but we could certainly see a quarter point or even a half point uh, a surprise cut here in August, and that could really be the uptrend that we're waiting for because, again, Bitcoin is, is oversold. So let me just jump over here. What I'm watching for, I didn't finish that sentence, is I want to see an, a bullish early reversal indicator, so a green arrow like this, and I want to see our TSI go green and above 20 because we already have bullish divergence here on uh, the RSI, on our RSI Pro signal. Okay, so I won't go into what that means. Just look for the green circle and uh, we can talk more detail what divergences mean later if you want. But you can, I want to keep things high level and simple here. All right, and you can always Google that stuff. But when we have all green in here, green is go. If we get a rate cut, this will fuel the next push higher. And, and if you guys weren't already aware of our, our new market cycle secrets course that we just released, you know, a lot of people think that all of this is noise. The market cycles are really what dictate things and the news just fills them the blanks. I often say, show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. So it's kind of an offshoot on that. The, um, the mid cycle low or the, the cycle low shouldn't be back here until a little bit later in August. Uh, although uh, we do appear to be putting in a bottom right in here. So stay tuned for that. We have some uh, we have some maybe new announcements coming up for that, and our cycle secrets course uh, is uh, sold out for now. But um, some of you are getting the hang of that, and that's just one more way for you to navigate these markets. So let's see. Bitcoin analyst sees seller exhaustion. This is worth noting, and this is a good uh, article we'll look at. And let's see. I didn't mean to highlight all of that. Let me open this up. But when when the sellers are exhausted, and by the way, the shorts had a field day all through here. People made fortunes on this drop. The leveraged sellers made fortunes. And so as I've always said, 
the tug of war, you have each side has to have their turn. Sometimes the bulls tug a little farther. Sometimes the bears get to tug a little harder. Without both of them, there is no tug of war. There's no point in the exercise in the game. And so clearly this was the sellers and the shorters turn to sell. And I knew people that had million dollar leverage shorts in this that probably made fortunes. And this is a seller. This is short covering partially and buying. So the seller exhaustion is where the buyers come back in. And uh, but I, I'm not convinced yet that we don't break lower. We certainly could. I'll I will be convinced if we see a bullish ERI TSI ERSI. I've said that a number of times because that's that's what we're looking for. Repetition is the mother of all learning. So just understand that. But the buyers are so far coming up to this sell block up in here. The sellers are still protecting this 57 250 range. And I know I'm bouncing around a bit, but let's go over to the one hour and four hour and see what this shows us in terms of our order blocks. So I'm a little bit encouraged. I am encouraged here on the one hour time frame. We have buy blocks down below here holding 50K, trying to hold that 50K range right here, 50,000 exactly. We have buy orders. That was our bounce and then more buy orders here on the 52K region. So this is encouraging. This looks like a capitulation sell-off to me. And uh, I'll turn off the rocket for now, but that's another one of our indicators that we'll be watching for and uh, on the upside. So a uh, four hour chart, if we come over here and let me see if I can make this a little larger for you guys so you can see this and uh, hide my window a bit. So I'll open that up on the four hour chart and not seeing a whole lot of extra on the indicators on what I were watching for, but let me zero in on this. What I'm specifically looking for is our average true range to flip over into buy zone. Here's another signal where we we had early signs to get out of this market. Our average true range flipped from buy to sell back here on Monday the 29th as well. Bearish engulfing candle on the four hour sell, uh, sell signal ATR. Now look, I'm gonna be honest with you, in the middle of it and when it's happening, it's not always as cut and dry and there's always sort of bullish news. The hype cycle is at its peak. And uh, so we just really have to, it, it does take practice. But it does, even though it's in hindsight, it's worthwhile looking at things saying, what did we miss? And we weren't really watching the four hour, although we should have been with the dynamic average true range. Of course, heavy sell pressure up in here. So Coinbase is showing the sell pressure on the four hour. It's not showing on a daily for some reason. And sometimes there are data incompatibilities. But for the most part, usually they are, they're, they're legit. So we're going to have the tough road on the way back up. We're going to have sell pressure here at 65K. We're going to have more sell pressure, 67K, and then all the way up to the 70K region. So what I am suggesting, we probably kind of curve up into here and have another drop down in that 50K region at some point. So just be aware, and it might be a good time to take some profits. So we'll look at that as well. And uh, I'll show you sort of how, how I use these signals to make profit on that last bounce, uh, make a nice little profit in Solana, and by putting in buy limit orders. So uh, these, these signals do work in all time frames, and that's one of the other benefits of using the crypto mastery indicators. They are fractal. So with that seller exhaustion, we'll talk about that and see, uh, I don't want to go too far down to this. Bank of Japan, erect the yen. We talk, we're talking about this now. Okay. Bargain bin borrowing. Let's see. I mean, loans. Yeah, this is a TLDR. Surging costs on yen denominated loans called caused the crash, as I said, because again, giving out 0% interest uh, loans and then suddenly saying, hey, actually, we need to charge interest on that now. So it's kind of like that free trial that you forget about, right? You say, oh, I'm sure, I'll take a free trial. And then you don't, you sort of mentally say, uh, you know, the fine print or, or your credit card, 0% interest for a year. And, and then it goes to 2499 and your intent is to pay it back before then, and then suddenly uh, something happens, and then all of a sudden you are paying 25% interest, what do you do? Uh, this saying, but now the markets are set for a healthy rebound as traders finally pair back the leverage, which is good, uh, always good, fresh start in the markets, and, and that's kind of the cycle. It's, so we go and wipe all the leverage off the out of the markets, people sort of come back in slowly, and then when it's at its fervor and the leverage is the highest, the liquidity, the powers that be go after that liquidity and, and the whales and institutions go wipe that out. Uh, it happens over and over again. You'd think we'd learn. So um, let's see. So basically saying if broader markets stabilize and they probably will, crypto may soon make a comeback. I, this this is true, you guys. Just the big elephant in the room 
is this Israel-Iran conflict. And um, if and when that escalates significantly, you know, we are slowly getting dragged into this, another war that uh, we can't really afford to fund. But the bigger concern is if Iran, you know, who is threatened to potentially launch a nuke. And the problem with that is, you know, that no one's talking about is uh, Kim Jong-un over there in North Korea says that they stand resolutely with Iran. So, guys, I just, you know, this this is sort of the thing that worries me, whether accidental or intentional, if any size nuke goes off, even a dirty bomb, uh, the markets are going to crater. They're going to do, we'll see a COVID crash style drop like we did yesterday, but I think bigger, the threat of World War III uh, it is a real one, and, um, and and it is putting a damper on things. So we really, really have to hope that that doesn't happen. But I, I will say this. It's another reason not to have 25 open positions. I would suggest one or two that you believe in, whether it's Bitcoin or ETH or Solana. And that way you can more better, more effectively manage your stop losses. And, and I, I want to repeat that. So I want you to hear me. Because in the summer of July or the summer of 2021, there was that that surprise uh, drop, and I was sitting in at the same table I am now. And overnight, just 30 uh, percent just wiped. Uh, and the problem was, as it was happening, it was impossible to manage 25 altcoin positions, you know. And so the name of this game is preservation of capital. If you have, like, currently, I have a large Bitcoin position and a large Solana you know, smaller but significant Solana position, and that's it. Everything else I'm out of. And the reason is I can watch those and monitor them carefully and uh, set stop losses to protect money, protect profits. So that is what I, I recommend doing because there is still quite a bit of volatility. Uh, the altcoins probably were not going to run hard until later. Certainly they could, but I think that's a more dangerous trade and should only be done by experienced swing traders. If you'd like help with learning how to do swing trading, that's what we do in our M3 class called M3 Active Trader. So we're very active with coin picks in that signal chat 24-7. And we do a, a Wednesday class similar to this one every Wednesday. And you can see lots of chat in here. Really smart traders and community in that group. So you can learn more at moonstream.io slash M3. There's a monthly option. I highly recommend this. There's a membership area. There are bonus templates like a dollar cost averaging template in Google Docs, a portfolio tracker and uh, some high probability cheat sheets like candlestick patterns. These are very helpful. And uh, also things like high probability trading patterns like the one we're in now, which is a descending broadening wedge. So you do want to learn these patterns because if they're bullish or bearish and uh, just a quick shot there, this is me, I do trade. And many of these YouTubers really don't do that. And so uh, lots, lots of feedback, testimonials, guys, we stop posting them on here. We get them all, all day long, uh, including one just the other day. Somebody said that I have been correctly calling these market tops and bottoms. So this is an excellent course and you get a cool hat and you get access to our basic level indicators, which are almost as good as the pro. So we have all the tools for you guys that you need. Okay, um, back to the news, and then we'll get to the charts. So I think we've unpacked this pretty well. And if anyone has any questions on these, uh, for some reason I can't quite get the uh, chat open. It's a different hotkey for this so let's see what I have to do to get that thing back open. Uh, I don't know, guys. I cannot see the questions at this point. I'll figure out how to do that in a moment. Um, all right. Price is mainly driven by short term. So it's no secret that crypto doesn't trade in fundamentals. This is true. Prices are mainly driven by short term institutional traders, hedge funds, and, you know, the leverage traders. So they profit off the volatility. So we know that also. And if you didn't realize that, if you didn't realize that and you're wondering why it's so volatile, because there are prop shops and big um, day trading firms and institutionals and hedge funds who have rooms full of traders and they sit around with lots of leverage to drive momentum either long or short, and then they get out and take their profits. So if you ever see prices shooting up or down quickly, like let, let's just use the bullish example. If you see a low volume coin suddenly start pumping, uh, that doesn't mean you should go run and buy it. That's what happens is retail sees, they have FOMO, they say this is going to the moon, not realizing that that fast push is leverage traders, momentum traders pumping that price, but selling 
into profit. And I'll show you how you can use our Bollinger Bands uh, to know when when to sell these because our Bollinger Band indicator is uh, is excellent. The basic Bollinger Bands, they're incorrectly configured for crypto. So we've modified ours to be correctly configured for crypto. So anyway, to boost returns, traders double down on positions with leverage or borrowed funds, often in staggering amounts. Yes. So, you know, those big pumps are huge trades and, uh, and you know, 10, 20, 50, even 100x leverage on these for short term gains and then they dump. So I want you, everybody to know and realize this. If it seems too good to be true, it often is. You don't want to be chasing these fast pumps. And so shortly before the crash, open interest, a measure of net borrowing stood at almost 40 billion. Wow. You know, we, we need to find a, an indicator of that and watch that more carefully. So let's see, uh, borrowed money, uh, some skimming this. Just okay. Trading a firm's cash and huge Japanese loans. Yeah. So trading firms cash and taking huge Japanese loans to cheaply finance trades in other markets. And then, of course, as I said, uh, they raise interest rates. So long as she's treasury for entry. So, hmm, what is this? Uh, excellent. Kyle Bass, uh, let's see. He thinks switching the treasury auctions from long duration bonds to T-bills enabled the treasury to throw another $2 trillion of liquidity into the market. Um, so I hadn't heard that. And then he gets into the yen carry trade. Okay, so I'm not sure if that means we have liquidity come in the market as possible. We get into that more detail in our M3 Active Trader class. Uh, suddenly my chat is back. So let me just see. Uh, Terry has a question about the radar. I will look at that and those other questions. So Perry says, was there any way to know on the charts that the recent major dip was going to happen? Well, I just showed you that, Perry. Uh, there was, and we've been talking about that, and I know you've been in class. So we, the bearish ERIs, the top of that trend channel, so the signs were all there, here and here and here. We knew back on the 23rd of July. <clears throat> Now, to be fair, it would it confirmed on the 30th. So our confirmation using these signals is an ERI. The thing is, this was an early signal because we have this upward trend channel showing lower highs. Do you see this? The trend is your friend, even if it's down. Okay. And so here, this was a bearish signal. This went bearish. The RSI went bearish. We had another pump into this sell block. We'll make it full screen so you can see this right here, sell block, bearish, ERI, and then we had the TSI going below 80. You see that? that was, that's all the signals you needed. So if you don't have the pro pack, uh, go get those at cryptomastery.org slash pro, and you can have those order block signals. The ERI, you get part of the M3 class. I think you're in, Perry. I'm not sure. But at any rate, there, there were clear as day signals. And I bet you if I put on the average true range on the daily, that it would have signaled that uh, also. I don't know if I have it on here. Let's just, since, since we're looking at that, let's go look at the average true range. Uh, and hey guys, I hope you realize I'm not here to sell you anything. You know, we do, it's part of our business, but we purposely make these tools for helping people. And that's a win-win for both of us. So if you don't already have those uh, indicators that you're gonna wanna have uh, access to those. So the average true range, you know, that flip, the, the average true range is better on a one hour, four hour, uh, or on a daily when they're catching a major inflection point, but this is a bit choppy. So it didn't say get out until a little later, but really you don't need more than these. So that was the signal. All right. So let's see. And uh, I have I time to finish one's market cycles, medium size. Now, I don't think that was a cycle situation, Perry. I just showed you exact, exactly what you should be watching for with our trade indicators. The, the cycles are really going to be better for predicting um, areas where a cycle low or cycle high should be, and then using our indicators for when price action is confirming it. I, I think the combination of both is, is, as one of you put, was the holy grail. And uh, thank you, Myrene, for putting the links and uh, let's see, yeah, exactly. Perry Bitstamp buy blocks are down to 46K, 40K, and Binance at 46K. So, you know, could we still pop down? We still could. We're not out of the woods. Let's see, indicators on Bitcoin daily do, um, don't look good. Look like mid end June with lots of down pressure possible. Okay, we'll look at that. Uh, the Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, when the Fed rate cuts, almost always means longer term recession starting. But uh, it, it's usually a few months later. 
So what I would say is, you know, we still could have that left translated cycle pump. If we had an emergency rate cut, it would pump the markets. They would then probably pump liquidity before the election cycle to make so they can come out and say, look how good the economy is and lie through their teeth like they do, like they all do. And uh, and so and then later, you know, this into November, December, usually we see that's when markets peak and rally. So I, I would have a, a window on your mind into that fourth quarter. I think that we are going to pump hard in the fourth quarter. I talked about this in M3 Trader. There are trillions of dollars on the sidelines that have now been opened up and the uh, have been green lighted through financial markets like Morgan Stanley. We'll talk more about that tomorrow in the M3 Trader and, and when that will likely happen, but I don't think that happens right away. Nobody wants a war except the banksters. Uh, it's an interesting term I haven't heard. The banksters, like the gangsters, and their psychopathic followers. Yeah, sound how sad how it wrecks everything for ninety percent of decent people. Yeah, I you know we are living in interesting times here, and despite all of our advances in in health and uh, finances and AI and technology, uh, we're still fun, fundamentally flawed uh, human beings. You know, I, I'd be very curious to be able to look a hundred years into the future and see if we have completely destroyed humanity or uh, come together because, um, you know, we've come a long way since the Middle Ages, but uh, still hardwired for conflict. I don't understand that. Anyway, uh, let's see. I'm going to go back to Perry says charts on market market cycles. I think you talked about that. Terry had a question and it's a question about the radar. Okay, so let's finish the news. Then I'll give it to the indicators and then we'll talk about that. So stick around. Okay, uh, coming back over here, end of the 17-year-old policy in Japan. I, I think we've unpacked this enough, the yen, uh, the yen carry trade. There's, it's, more, it's more detailed than that, and, um, but we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. And uh, so, uh, let's see, liquidations, yeah, no surprise here, 300 million. Um, th this is much higher. If we pull up a liquidation heat map, it's probably closer to a billion. Uh, and in fact, I can see that here, uh, a billion leverage was this 24 hours and that's that's the size of a liquidation guys a billion but but uh but that usually is enough to flush all the liquidity uh out of or all of the leverage out of the system and then and then what usually happens is price resumes the original trend or the actual trend that's supposed to happen so uh jump trading sale of more than 370 million so just from jump trading uh dumping 370 million i mean that's not it's not a staggering amount considering Michael Saylor's buying 500 and 700 million at a time. But yeah, it says they didn't trigger the downturn at most that amplified what was already destined to be a historic sell-off. So that's back to Japan and, uh, and causing that. So anyway, let me just skim this. We have a few more news articles. Uh, you know, people are talking about the Ethereum ETF not doing well, and, and that's kind of you know, was to be expected. It was not as uh, nearly as um, sort of sexy as the Bitcoin ETF. But I think over long term, it does, it continues to grow. So I wouldn't cut it out completely, but you can't expect it to be the fastest growing ETF like Bitcoin was. And if all else fails, there are always rate cuts. We talked about that. Uh, let's see. Stock market Japan dropped 12%. The worst day drop since 1987. This news is not helping us. It's in the past. So what, what's the reaction? That may force Japan's central bank to intervene, softening the blow to borrowers. And here's, here's the deal. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. That if Japan uh, does intervene and drop their interest rates, the U.S. may be in uh, following suit. And because we also saw a sharp rise in unemployment, that's, that's what the Fed watches for before dropping rates. They kind of wait till they break everything. They wait for unemployment to spike because otherwise they're, they're like, well, yeah, it's, not so, it's not so bad. It's kind of like taking your car into the, the you know, the, the the guy down the street to fix your dent and he puts some Bondo in there and you say, oh, that's not so bad instead of repairing it the right way, you know, until the bumper falls off. Okay. And then you need a new bumper. It's kind of like that. So it's, um, yeah, good. All right. That's all I wanted to talk about there. Uh, Bitcoin analysts see seller exhaustion as Bitcoin price rebounds 10%. So that's good. We saw that. And uh, we unpacked that a little bit as well. Let me move this out of the way so I can do the highlighter. And Bitcoin sellers run out of steam. Now, that's also the short sellers covering and locking in their profits. 
keep in mind when you see a bounce, it doesn't mean that all the buyers rushed in. It means all those short sellers that just made millions are saying, hey, I, I'm out. I'm taking my profits. And by buying back the coins that they shorted, essentially borrowed and sold without owning, that's what that is, a fair amount of it. So it's a combination of both. So understand that uh, because the shorts can always come back in and often they do when we pump up to the moving averages, they will short again. So that's what we want to watch for, uh, especially on the shorter time frames. short damage pool, I was just going to mention people sell off. Um, you, you know, th that's why I've learned not to panic on these and sell into the capitulations because usually we get a bounce and at least then you have a chance to sit back and, and reevaluate and um, maybe sell uh, into some strength. Okay, so we're back up above 55K. Can I tell you what I'm saying? There's vast downturns. Uh, yeah, so this is the VIX, right? So we've been watching that. And um, I, I posted something the other day about how the VIX had spiked to the similar levels as the COVID crash. And as we know, that COVID crash, when we pull up a chart, was an excellent buying opportunity. And uh, this is, chart says the same thing. Volatility index rises to 65, only seen during the 2020 pandemic and 2008 financial crisis. I will point you guys over to my trading view page where I also did here. I did this on August 5th as well. So essentially there's a study on this. And if I open that up, uh, you guys can follow me here on, if you Google Brett Fogel on trading view, I do post uh, periodic studies like this. And so uh, here's, and the, these I can't undo. I, I've had a lot of predictions that came true, but here you can see, as I pointed out, we got up to 65 on the VIX previously only during the COVID crash. So these guys uh, did a very similar graphic to mine and I'll just hit play. And of course we've uh, reverted back down uh, on the, uh, the VIX coming back down in this the 39 level. So if we go over and look at Bitcoin and zoom out on this, let's just, uh, I'll go to a weekly to see this a little bit better and I'll turn off our ERIs just to clean up the chart. But if you haven't done this before, Let's see. Okay, this chart's not going back far enough because I need to get it into uh, a different, uh, a longer bit stamp should do it. Bear with me. I, I think it's worth doing this because when we draw this trend line, this COVID march right here, uh, is this, I need this should be on logarithmic. That would help us. And okay, now we can see it. Uh, anytime you're going to pass a year, you want to be make sure you're in logarithmic mode on your charts, by the way, because then it will give you a better look at this. But look at this trend line, you guys. So look at this, look at this. And it just touched right here at that COVID crash. The COVID crash dropped right down to that point and bounced. It bounced very hard, took us up to all time highs. So let's see what happens if we draw this trend line out further. It also caught this sort of bottoming in the bottom markets here. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to finagle this too much, but it's let's just do the best we can. So, so we're right in this area where that would be an excellent balance for us, even if we did come down lower. But that is why I've been advising people in my M3 Active Trader Group and Retire Rich to consider taking some money off the table protecting the downside, but having powder dry it by any pullbacks, because here we're, look at this. If we pull back down to that 46 K range, that's going to be strong support. And uh, this is a weekly time frame. but look at that. That would be right on that very impactful trend line that could take us up to all time high. So I, I, I do think there's a fair chance we do pull back to that 46 K level still. And uh, we can see that here and it would, it looks pretty bad on this sign, but when in doubt, zoom out. We have, this is an excellent buying opportunity, 46K on Bitcoin. And so I would say, uh, you know, have some powder dry to buy this if we get down this region, because currently we are in a downward trending um, channel. It's sort of forming a steeper channel, but uh, it could go either way. The, the descending broadening wedge looks like this. And so whether you do it like that or you open it up here, a descending broadening wedge usually resolves to the upside, but that doesn't mean we can't continue down and bounce out of this range and then go higher. Uh, this, this no longer looks like a bull flag to me, you guys. It's now a descending broadening wedge. Bull flags don't last this long typically. And so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But this, 
this to me is the the buy region if we are to come back down and we don't know what what could cause that but uh the uh, you, you know have some powder dry be ready to deploy capital in this area this excellent buy zone because like with real estate you make money when you buy not when you sell i mean it's both but you have to if you buy below market in real estate you lock in profit from the day one if you're buying near the market top then you've got a lot of risk and overhead and selling at break even or at a loss. So same thing here, you guys. All right, uh, let's jump in over here. So I showed you that and let's see twice in history. So this is pretty prominent uh, analyst here, Cobes, see how you say that noted the VIX has only hit levels like that twice in history, the 2008 financial crisis and the 2020 COVID crisis. So did I, I'd like to see that actually on our chart if I zoom out a bit. Did it go back to 2008? Um, well, actually, that's a VIX reading, but I'm just going to look at it on here. And well, of course, we don't have 2008 on Bitcoin. Uh, uh, dummy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Get carried away. And then I have to do some uh, math there and realize, yeah, the Bitcoin wasn't around until then, but later. All right. So, well, uh, eerily similar 2020. I think we're going too far, but see, Fed point at some point, the Fed will step in, likely early rate cuts, probably 22, but when? Until then, all markets expect to correlate. Federal Reserve reported considering emergency meeting. This I didn't know with um, bets on the outcome diverging considerably. Uh, we will look at the, the Fed tool tomorrow in the M3 class, which gives probabilities. We'll see if those probabilities have shifted, although there technically isn't a meeting this month. So it would be an emergency meeting to review it. And uh, this is that, yeah, Jeremy Siegel from Wharton Business School that I mentioned calling for a 75 basis point rate cut on the Fed funds rate now and another 75 points indicated for next month. So that's significantly higher than what was pre-noted and um, predicted. There was a, there was a basically um, predicting a half point cut in September and another in November previously. I bet you that that's changed now. So we'll look at that tomorrow. And again, you can join that class. So go to M3, sorry, moonstream.io slash M3. And uh, stick around, you guys. I'm going to get to using our trade success checklist, how you can use that in our indicators to dominate these markets. All right. So and here's here's that Fed tool. Of course, we'll look at that live tomorrow. And so a 97.5 percent uh, prediction that they will cut a half a point in the next meeting. So we'll see what happens there. Is that a half a point? I get it mixed up. A quarter point. But uh but also likely to drop. This is going to change. They'll probably drop. They're going to probably do an emergency drop. If they don't do it in August, they'll do at least a half a point in October. Uh, they may or may not do three quarters of a point. We'll have to see. Any surprise that's more than what they thought initially will be met with a pump in the markets, I believe. Okay. Uh, Bitcoin sell volume that goes post having. You know, it is strange though. You know, we had the hash ribbon indicator fire and the, the miners. Um, you know, the halving is here. It just sometimes takes a while for that to kick in. And let's see, we're not going to look at Warren Buffett. Basically, they're probably saying, because Warren Buffett sold half of his Apple stock, I think, uh, last month or last week. So, uh, yes, he was right. Well done. He must have some connections over there in Japan and knew what was coming. Popular trade direct capital. I had exhaustion among sellers during the trip to 49K, 29%. Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I don't know. These these charts here are somewhat hard to read. I don't know what these boxes mean. Unless these are cycles that he was drawn on this. But they look like not sure what he's doing there. I'll unpack that later. It doesn't really matter. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Bitcoin ETF trading volume tops a billion. That's probably outflows. I'd be curious tomorrow, you guys, remind me to look at the outflows on the iBit, see what's happening there. Uh, we've talked about Japan already. I don't think we need this. Uh, Japan and South Korea experiencing severe market downturns. So, so I guess it's also worth noting is how bad the contagion will be among other countries' economies. Mm, when there's a big downfall drop like this, usually there's, you know, you never know where the other end of the spaghetti is going to connect. And could we have further contagion and problems like this? I don't know, you guys, this is not bode well for the longer term, even 2025, where we would be experiencing our massive bull market, uh, you know, with uh, with all this happening, global 
uh, tensions rising. We haven't heard much from China and Taiwan lately either. And maybe, well, I don't know. It's not coordinated, probably, but we don't. We only have so many ships to send around the world and be the world's policemen and women to, before we bankrupt our, ourselves. And so just imagine if there were more conflicts for us than we can really handle and be a part of. And then one of them just creates huge global conflict. And, uh, you, you know, it, it ain't either one of them. Uh, I'm not going to get into politics, but uh, Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, all of our allies under attack uh, in some form or another. So anyway, economic uncertainties, recessions, central bank policies, amplifying volatility. But, you know, I it, this is why it's so hard. I talk a lot about the hype cycle at the market tops when everything is so good. That's when they're the bigger players are really exiting positions. So wouldn't that using game theory, wouldn't that also be true potentially that when things seem the bleakest and darkest before the dawn, we're about to go much higher? So, so I would say that, you know, fortune favors the brave being somewhat invested in this market makes sense in case we shoot higher, being fully invested does not, that's riskier unless you're nimble and can get out of the drop of a hat, being out of the market, no good, but ha having some powder dry and having some invested makes the most sense to buy pullbacks at key buy levels where we can see buyers and trend line support like that 46 K region. So. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to check something here on a bunch of Solana moving. And we'll get to that. Okay. Global financial markets turmoil. Crypto world acting like a boiling volcano. Jeez. Isn't that, isn't that great for us? South Korea dropped 4%. Slim correction. Japan worse than Black Monday, 1987. These are not bullish signals. Uh, I think I think it's worth saying, and, and you, you might be saying, you know, the old phrase, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, but my point here is that back to that contagion, who, who else? Remember back when we started losing, you know, like Terra Luna and uh, some BlockFi and, and, we, and Celsius. And so pretty soon more dominoes kept falling. We could be seeing that the dominoes starting to tip on the global macro side of things. And, and these are things we just won't see until they they happen. Right. So think of that. That may be the narrative of this cycle uh, is instead of FTXs and brokerages going under, we're seeing sort of countries uh, falling. I, I don't know. I, I want to I want to just just be you guys get the point. I'm not trying to, be a, to spread fear, but we don't want to be complacent and think, oh, everything's fine now. Um, yeah, no, it's not not necessarily fine. Are we on the brink of a major stock market crash? Uh, now there's some sensational level. You should discount everything a little bit. But um, I think we've covered this pretty well. The U.S. might be heading to a recession. The SAM rule did fire, of course, but uh, the, the creator of it said, don't worry. And, um, and I think that some of this is just designed to trigger emotional reactions. Uh, like I said, uh, Buffett uh, sold his Apple. Market influence. Um, let's see. Uh, Fed is uh, unsure about cutting in September raising uncertainty and causing the sell-off in Japan. Uh, okay, if the, it's so, oh, wait, wait a minute. If the economy and prices move in line with our projection, they will continue to rise in, raise interest rates. Yeah, I mean, there's there's still that, that specter of deflation. And, um, you, you know, so this is definitely unfolding slowly. So let's see. More bloodshed to come. CryptoQuant predicts Bitcoin price. Uh-oh. All right, guys, we got to look at that. Uh, this person saying that now, now keep in mind these kind of sites that are less legitimate. Let me just say that um, that are uh, you know ad driven PR placement, paid placement, lots of ads on the page. See these ads over here. These articles and these headlines are deliberately designed to get you guys to click on it out of fear. So we're going to discount this a little bit. Anything with advertising on it, these are ad-driven sites. So bloodshed to come. Big, scary headline. CryptoQuant predicts Bitcoin price plunge below 40K. I don't know. I don't know. Anything's possible. I think 46K is more probable. But again, you guys, if we lose, four, if we lose this trend line here and we go to 40K, 
we got a problem. We have a much bigger problem then. Uh, and so more than likely, this is what we see. Okay, and then we have a question mark. Then we have another pullback and then a breakthrough out, breakout. Uh, th this, is, this is significant resistance here. So my best guess, Cryptodamus guess here is we say this, and then we retest, and then we go like that. And when, who knows, October. That's what I see until October. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, further clients, quant to quants. Might drop possibly to 40K, blah, blah, blah. Why does he say that? Breach of support. Trump chat. I think he's wrong. This has already been invalidated, I think, um, because we've already bounced. We're back up to 55K on this. So uh, maybe up to 58K. Where are we right now, you guys? Um, we are at 57K. So we're right back. They're saying because we broke below 57K. So this whole argument's just been blown out of the water. Uh, they're talking about on-chain metrics. I don't follow that. I think it's I think it's nowhere near as effective as what we have in our signals, and it's more of a long-term uh, guesstimate. And so, talk about uh, in hindsight, uh, the the on-chain analytics very good at hindsight accuracy. Uh, okay, so one of the key support levels for Bitcoin is around forty-seven. K where 900,000 addresses previously bought 400 okay yeah, in the past uh selling pressure so so you know there this is I've already covered that all right 307 million worth of Solana moves to centralized exchanges don't like to hear that because that might indicate that's to be sold and of course uh there is some um, some talk about um Solana there was a bunch of Solana that was being sold off I don't know though I like I like Solana it's being pushed down by some whales, but it bounced nicely here. Um, oh, okay. So Solana could fall to $83 if it fails to hold 118 support level. Uh, but as we've already seen, this has bounced nicely already right back to 147. So I have to say that might have been one of my better trades of the year. Uh, back in here, um, I put out publicly in my M3 Active Trader chat to our members, I said, I, I recommend placing buy limit orders where guys inside of this order block so i had buy orders at 115 and and i usually do it from the top down i had buy orders at 125 at 120 and at 115 i might have had one at 130 so i bought all in here and these are all in profit as we're bouncing and so typically on these capitulation sell-offs you can see these nice bounce reversions why was i confident in doing that because this level this one 25 level has been such a strong support level. And so I, and, and even stronger now, you guys. So I don't think we go below 118 because there's a lot of buy pressure here. This, uh, what happened there? I clicked the wrong one. Hang on, stick with me, you guys, because this is important thought. Uh, basically, this person is wrong. <clears throat> now, they, they say if, let me highlight it. And I have to qualify. Nobody's ever, so I can't say they are wrong. I think, I think they're, I think they're dead wrong. Okay. So this comment, Solana could fall to 83 if it fails. Well, that's true. If it fails 118, it's really more like 115. There's buyers. No, they're right, 118. So if it were to fall, it could happen, of course. Uh, next support would be 95. But, but look at how much support there is here on Solana at 127. One and two and three and four and five and six. So breakouts usually happen and breakdowns usually happen on the third, fifth, we're six, so we've now held that level six times in a row. I don't see Solana going below that price unless we have significant market turmoil, but look how fast this was bought up. Um, guys, I've turned 50 Solana into 90 Solana in since May, trading it in my IRA, trading this channel here, essentially, because I sold my Solana over in here yesterday and I bought it back here and it's already up, so maybe it's over 100 Sol uh value anyway anyway not here to talk about me oh and look at this aioz was my call on my pick for our retire rich class last week and we had a drop down and dump but look at this nice rebound on this we'll talk about this more in the m3 trader class tomorrow along with some other recommendations and coins that are bouncing back nicely how are we doing on time i think we're probably running a little bit long so let me finish off the news and uh, get to more of your questions uh, and specifically toward the indicators 
So, uh, Solana, technical industry, in this, uh, forgive me, guys. I'm trying to move my finger and my mouth and look at the screen at the same time. It's hard to make them all work in conjunction. Solana technical analysis uh, expert Saul Tech Analyst says reducing risk of further decline um, and not to focus on Solana too much here. If Saul, if Saul, as we just showed, if Saul sustains daily close above 125, um, <clears throat> price reversal likely to the upside. I think we're on the right side of the Solana trade. The other reason is uh, the ETF is out of the way. Uh, the next is the Solana ETF. Now there's some conjecture that they won't even get one because they don't have a futures product yet. But uh, Larry Fink over at BlackRock has signaled that he wants a Sol ETF. And if, if Larry Fink, what, what Larry Fink wants, Larry Fink gets. So that is the next asymmetrical trade to consider is here says Sol not naturally going down. Let's see, pushed down by a whales. All right, so we're getting into something a little more advanced. So I'll keep this for tomorrow, but this is suggesting that whales placing spoofy trades, a spoofed trade, I'm not gonna open the article, basically is a, of trying to fool out the day traders, the momentum traders, the sellers on the uh, order book, the time and sales, trying to show there's big sell orders or even actually selling it. Here it says to make the noobs and risk managers sell, right, so they can buy back lower. They're stealing your bags and make you buy back at higher prices. So that's why that Solana trade we had. And congrats to my N3 members that took advantage of that along with me. Uh, we nailed that one, you guys. And uh, that's so there's some nice profits on that um, because um, that's exactly what happened. And we could see it in the charts. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. I saw it in the charts. And now this is the news saying what happened. We didn't need to know that. Uh, and so <clears throat> anyway, 24 hours critical for Saul. Saul's holding up just fine. So we are good to go there, I believe. Here's a Washington Post article. Uh, Dow sees more than a thousand points. Global market sell off. Um, I, I don't. The the post is not really neutral in their reporting. So uh, you know what? This is. I'm not going to read that. They're they're already late, uh, and I'm not a fan of the post actually. So BTC price chart. They know enough about Bitcoin. As um, I was going to say Trump, but at least Trump is pro Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, and, and hit, by the way, um, <clears throat> well, we're not going to get into that. I'm not going to talk about politics. What we need, though, is a pro crypto leader, whether it's RFK, whether it is former President Trump, uh, the current administration, not pro Bitcoin, does not have my vote. Bottom line, single issue vote for me and anyone who has crypto should be Bitcoin price chart shows Bitcoin can match 49k lows within days. Um, all right, let's see what this is. You know, I do want to point out that we filled some CME gaps recently, so that should be bullish. But this is saying that Bitcoin could revisit those lows. And I, you know, could, should all of these, we know Bitcoin can do whatever it wants. If Bitcoin does Bitcoin things. I want to see why. Let's see a giant daily candle wick spooks and analysis. I think they mean analysts. So popular crypto trader we've never heard of. I won't even mention the name because I've never heard of them. Uh, I don't know how these these uh, nobodies kind of get on these. I, I, they must have a PR department. So at some point I'll have articles in here and I'll do these myself. So we're not misleading people. Warned recent Bitcoin price volatility mained up in Bitcoin matching six month lows. I, I mean, uh, but I think they're wrong. This is bullish, you guys. This wick being bought up, and now we have a bullish engulfing candle, is bullish. The only thing that is, of course, pouring cold water on that is we're in a downtrending channel now, and that's a lot of what we do here. We want to wait till downtrending channels get invalidated or filled. So, you know, until and unless we start putting in higher lows, this is still our narrative, and, you know, I wouldn't be buying, this is render, sorry, you guys, uh, interesting down trending channel, but uh, same thing, you know, Bitcoin, huge lower wick, back up above prior support. This person wrote the article yesterday and is now sitting there saying, well, I was wrong. And uh, I think that's the case, but still we have, we have to start putting in some higher lows. Okay. But we at least held that 54K level and, and that's bullish. When in doubt, zoom out. We have some prior prior support, of course. You know, we also have support at fifty two k back in this region. So, um, I you know, I think that 
you know, I, I think that this overall, this is a broadening descending wedge. I think we come out of this. If we start putting in higher lows, then that's good signals. All right. Let's see. For Crip Nouveau, there is cause for concern. Uh, it's just, uh, but not to dismiss it entirely, large wicks generated by volatility tend not to wait long before price returns to fill them. I don't agree with that. Uploading an explanatory chart, he shows that often matter days before such a process plays out. Um, okay, well, look, I, you have to be, we have to not let our ego get in the way and not to um, have a confirmation bias. So here he's showing there was a large downwick here, recovery, and then what, this is a one day chart. It says one or two days here, large wick. So the problem with this analysis, this is at the top of a market move. And we are not at the top, we're at a bottom. Okay, so in this case, let's focus on his analysis. You know, in this case, we saw this bottom and we had a recovery. So this counters the argument. Down here, we had a wick and we pushed higher, but this wasn't after an extended move. I think we are, you know, or at support. So back here, 54K, we've been here before. We saw the wicks and we did held and push back up. Now, could we come back down later? We could, but uh, I think um, it remains to be seen. You know, it depends. It really depends on if there's another shoe to drop, another country to fall, another war to, to wage. Uh, we are not out of the woods, but we are back up above here, looking more bullish than when he wrote the article. And uh, I think that's fair. So anyway, uh, let's see. Um, we don't know how long we'll take for that wick to fill, but should we get filled sooner or later? Uh, you, you know, I, I think I think that just because there's a wick there doesn't mean it needs to be filled. I think there's a lot of factors involved. Uh, but everyone, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Okay, probably time to consider Bitcoin. Right, guys, that's enough of the news. Anything else that needs to be discussed? Let's see. Seller exhaustion talked about that. Strategic reserve bill, not worth worried about that now okay we're done with the news thank goodness all right let's go back over to any more questions i see six more questions uh terry i will get to your comment on the radar and let's say i covered that interesting chart shows recession after fed pivots and that's from perry uh, let me just think about that i mean typically there is sort of recession after the pivot but it's not right away Right, so we have Fed pivot here. There's a lot going on in this chart. Let me just unpack this. We have what? What is the tequila crisis, you guys? Um, <laughs> what? There's quite a bit on here for sure. Continental notes, savings and loan, yeah, dot com crash, credit crisis, gotcha. So Fed pivots, and then we go into recession. Fed pivot, uh, recession. I assume that's the red line. S and P five hundred, right? Fed pivot, Fed pivot. So, so we have the. But the 2018 Fed pivot wasn't too much, a little bit. But yeah, I mean, we really want them to pivot later, don't we? Because the sooner they pivot, the sooner we could roll over. And uh, thanks, that's that's a great uh, chart there. In fact, oops, I'm going to do that. And we're going to save that because that was a good one. Uh, for some reason, I can't get out of the chart, though. Uh, all right, let's see. I have to close that and get back over here. And what I'm going to do, though, oops, where is this thing? Come over here to the entry. I'm just going to drop that in and share that with the M3 trader members because we'll come back to that. Okay, you guys. Uh, and then the chat went where? My chat has disappeared once again. My questions, rather. Bear with me, guys. I saw, I'm sorry, I hey, uh, was supposed to be back in the office by now, but um, something came up. Here we go. Thank you for sharing that, Barry. And then um, Bitstamp, buy blocks are to 40, 46K. Yes, trend line you draw on the log chart indeed lines up with those buy blocks, 40, 46K. That's right, Barry. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Have some dollars ready. Have that mattress money ready for if we get to 46K to be buying Bitcoin. Uh, can you get the charts for Saul? Um, absolutely, Natasha. I'd love to do that. And um, we'll put that a little bit. So we'll go back. Side point, Perry says, not crypto, but a chance to hedge with the VIX. Um, can you, can you, uh, uh, Perry, I think you're in M3. Can you bring that up tomorrow? I think that's probably beyond the scope of this class here. I want to get into some training on the indicators, but 
you know, two X long VIX futures ETF like liquidation, liquid insurance policy. Interesting. Thanks for sharing. I, I, have you traded that before? I like to keep things simple. Uh, let's see. Your IRA allows for limit orders. Um, well, yeah, actually, no, it doesn't. Um, so basically, I put limit buy orders on my. Uh, I have a trust on a popular exchange. I try to be a little bit cautious on these things. So it was one of the major exchanges in their advanced mode. You can do buy limit orders. I, I once those hit, I put. I log back into my trust. I use iTrust IRA. Uh, and by the way, guys, PSA, iTrust has had some issues. I just learned about they lost control of their website for 11 days. I haven't confirmed this, but they didn't tell everybody. So you may want to ask them. If you ask them, they'll let you know, but they got locked out of their own platform. As far as I know, people didn't lose any funds, but that's pretty scary. Um, I like the interface, but we'll be moving over probably to a different IRA, the original inventors of Bitcoin IRAs that I met at the Bitcoin conference. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, on the IRAs, typically don't have the ability to do limit orders and the trading fees are much higher. So you don't want to be actively trading in the IRA. So with that, let's hop over. Natasha wanted to look at Solana. So we did look that a little bit. Let's let's jump over to that and see. I am going to put that chat away for a moment. Uh, let's go down the line here. Interestingly, though, the Sol BTC is pushing up. Sol ETH also pushing up nicely. Uh, look at that. I have an alert already on Sol ETH at if crossing point zero six would be uh, a buy signal. But it's it's worth noting to all of you guys who love Solana that uh, Bitcoin dominance when it starts to roll over is when the altcoins run. I think Solana leads that altcoin. Uh, rally and Solana ETH, but right now, uh, you know Solana ETH, Solana versus ETH, Solana versus BTC. So ETH BTC is negative, Solana BTC is strong. So Solana gathering strength, you guys, and also our TSI is turning green. Keep an eye on Sol. I think that looks good. I will click on the uh, total market cap. We had lost that two trillion dollar mark, and it's important we get back above that because previously that is now a resistance area. What could cause us to roll over and go lower if if total market cap rejects? And that is a better signal of what's going to happen next than Bitcoin. <clears throat> Bitcoin follows total market cap. And similarly, I've been saying and showing you guys in the M3 Active Trader, we've had all this sell pressure, multiple overlaying sell blocks on the total market cap. In hindsight, like gravity is always right, isn't it? And so we should have seen and confirmed, look, this is when all that narrative was. <laughs> remember, remember when, when have you heard this before? We're going, but we're going to 100,000, right? Well, we can no longer believe that narrative. We have to believe what we see. Rejected, 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 total market cap, never getting back up in this range. This is still going to be a significant obstacle, you guys. And it's possible, it's possible that the market top is in for this part of the cycle because I can see a lot of sell pressure there. And I would also submit there's going to be a lot of sell pressure at $3 trillion. Because as we know, that was the exact market top back in 2021. And I called that, I was telling people to get out of the markets in September, October, November. I actually found a screenshot in the M3 Act Trader chat from September saying, guys, I think it's time to start getting into cash. But really October and then into November, uh, then I was saying that pounding the table in January of course, but this is where we saw it. We just touched three trillion market cap, total market cap, and then we rolled over, came down, and then it had a nice head and shoulders. So I also will call this. We were back in here coming into November and December on uh, this total market cap, telling people to get out of the markets. And then by January, it was clear we were going to just really not looking good. I was telling people pounding the table to get out of the markets, but uh, here this big head and shoulders, guys, simple indicators work the, work the best. I had a prominent trader here on TradingView. Uh, it was very popular. I don't want to name him. We've become friends. Uh, he was he was certain, according to his Elliott Wave theory, that we would become come out of this area swinging and off to new highs. And later he congratulated me, said, hey, that was a nice call. You're right. And uh, he's, he's since um, not, not been posting on TradingView anymore. Uh, but it's okay because he's just built a $35 million house in Utah because he's been buying millions of dollars of Ethereum for the last six, seven years and has done very well, done very well. 
uh, for for himself. So anyway, mad res much respect to that guy. Uh, anyway, back to this. Keep an eye on total market cap. I'm going to set an alert actually above two trillion. We want to see that coming back above two trillion. That would be bullish. And if we don't, that would uh, not be bullish. How about that? Uh, so let's keep on going to Solana. I want to keep going quickly for you guys. I will talk about the DXY tomorrow. I do have a chart of it. I'll show it briefly. So here's the thing, though. Uh, we we are in Bitcoin rally zone on the DXY. We get the dollar closing down, you know, and um, so I was suggesting that maybe we had decoupled from the Dixie because, but not only did the Dixie go down, but so did crypto and Bitcoin. Generally, they're inversely traded, but uh, the Dick the, the VIX here are continuing to go lower. Maybe we are going to rally right out of this. So um, unfortunately, lots of variable factors, as we talked about. So we'll move that question mark over there and we'll talk about that more tomorrow. And uh, moving right along, let's go over here. So Sol dominance, Sol dominance picking up. Solana is looking really interesting, you guys. I would be overweighted, not financial advice, but I would be overweighted in Solana right now. A bunch of these alts here just getting brutal, brutalized and... Um, you know, we will talk about these more tomorrow. These are dead cat bounces. These are short coverings. And I would not be buying these, not try to catch a falling knife unless you see our signal starting to line up. The ERI, which we don't have on Phantom. Uh, so just be careful, you guys, and, and make sure you're drawing your trend channels uh, because uh, that's kind of a good guideline here. Right? So you go like that until and unless we're kind of out of this. You know, this is not a good bullish looking chart. Maybe long term Phantom Coin runs again. We love Phantom Coin, but. These are not good-looking charts, you guys. Uh, you want to look at for bullish signals that are not here yet. Although on Helium token, seeing a bullish ERI, it's on my radar now. We can jump over to use the trade success checklist if we want. Helium did not get hit that badly, did it? And it's putting in a higher low. So even though they had just bled out all the way back here, uh, you know, sounds like they've got something to figure it out. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. I like this. Let's see if there is any news on Helium. Uh, let's see, July 23rd. We did catch this rally, by the way, and we caught this nice little rally and sold right into this buy block. I made some nice money on helium on that move. And uh, but I look at this nice upward trending trend trend line and possibly new trend channel forming. So what we want to see is we want to wait for our trend strength indicator to go above 20. So I'm going to set an alert here uh, to go above 20. 63 and that's fine for me and i'll put a little note to myself say uh buy because that could be a little breakout now these are swing trades only i think the overall market's still kind of in, in uh, dangerous territory so and then of course if we see an rsi go green but these are enough eri tsi uh, we have our signal indicator in here somewhere that uh may be turned off but i'll go and find that and turn that back on as well Okay, fetch coin, file coin, the three Fs. Uh, the three Fs we kind of can, you know, gave us the big FU here recently and uh, did this big downturn. I don't know. Um, you know what? This might have been the final capitulation. We've got an RSI on that. It's just too early to tell. I wouldn't be buying a lot of these uh, lower cap altcoins, but let's get over to Solana because we want to look at that. Solana, again, I showed this before. A nice, get, okay, well, look at this, you guys. Um, as of now, we are getting a bullish ERI. We pushed up higher. Solana is looking great here. We want to see how the day trade uh, closes, but we have a bullish engulfing candle. We have an ERI. We have an RSI, and we all were about to get a TSI to go green maybe by tomorrow. And you can see I already have an alert on there seeing TSI crossing of 20. So that would be what we call our four horsemen. And that's that's our screaming by signal for us also coming out of the buy zone. So uh, while I am disappointed a little bit in myself that I didn't keep my stops on Bitcoin and sell at 60K, I didn't want to get wicked out. So I held, but I think I nailed this Solana trade pretty well. And, and I'm, I'm glad I shared that with you guys in the, uh, yeah, you can sh I even share just in case you're wondering and you're like, you know, sure, uh, everyone says that. I I'm going to show you that we actually did share that in the, in the group. And if you were in the M3 Active Trader, you could have paid for that for the entire year with this one trade. And let's see, I see some private. Myrene, I see you're sending me questions. I'm not going to open up my private chat while I'm screen sharing. So I won't be able to just check that out. But let's see here. Bear with it. We've got very active in here, as you can see. 
here, right here. I said, I put a buy order on Solana. And where did it go? But I, here's the actual buy. And uh, right here, putting a bunny where my mouth is. So these are my actual uh, orders. And I don't know if you saw on 8-4. So this was on two days ago. <clears throat> this was on Sunday. And I put buy limit orders in, sharing some numbers here. Hope you forgive me, but here, $115, $120, $125. So I got filled at all of these. The average price was around $125. All of those filled, they're all in profit now. So you can put limit buy orders in, <laughs> Elon. Uh, by the way, you guys, I will share this. Uh, be very careful here. This is a scam. If you see a video of Elon Musk or Michael Saylor telling you to go buy something or go to a website, it's a scam. It is AI. They've cloned his voice. They've cloned their voices. They've closed their, their images. And uh, they have them saying, send me your Bitcoin and we'll send it double back. I had a friend that nearly fell for this. I was at the Bitcoin conference watching Michael Saylor speak. And he's texting me saying, hey, Elon is on video saying, send the Bitcoin here. And, and I said, no, no, don't do it. It's a scam. It's been running for a while. They've just upped their sophistication. So, uh, and I just saw that again on Twitter. So be very careful, you guys. Don't send your crypto anywhere. And uh, just keep that in mind. Um, if it's too good to be true, sounds too good to be true, it is. All right. Back to back to what we're looking at here. Can you guys see this? This is a good time to go to our, free, our uh, trade checklist if you want. A free copy of the trade success checklist. Go to moonstream.io. Down at the bottom is some free resources. Sign up for our free newsletter. Sign up for our free training here. That's this class every Tuesday. So if you're watching replay, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, do us a favor, hit the like button and subscribe. Put your bell notification on. We'll be doing more of these. And we're being told we have some of the best TA out there anywhere, top 3%. And here is the trade success checklist. So what this is, it is a gamified PDF. You can just give us your information. We'll send it right to you. And uh, it's a gamified PDF so that you can uh, download this and, and do kind of a, a checklist for the um, markets and your trades. So once you see these trades line up, so you go here, you'll get it, you'll download it as a PDF. So give me a moment here. We'll download this here. And now... This should be interactive. Let's see, I've got to move this over. You'll have to download it and open the download because for that, that interactive functionality to work, okay? So here we see when you click on it, it's going to give a checkbox. And when that happens, every one of these you check, it gives the score for your trade. So on a long trade, if you have anything two or higher, two or three or four out of 21, that is a trade worth taking. So let's go back and unpack this in a live example with Solana. So this perfect segue. So is there an ERI signaling a green up arrow so we can see it like this? I'll probably get a better example with a bigger arrow. Uh, and let's jump over to Solana. So do we have that? We do. We have a fresh ERI. Now I do suggest normally wait till the end of the day to make sure that stays because the signal is only valid on end of day. So 8 p.m. Eastern. So, um, but I feel pretty confident in this. We have the bullish engulfing candle. So I'm going to give this a check for the uh, ERI. Okay, so we've got that. So we now have a check mark of one out of 21. And it says, and or does the ERI oscillator have a green line? Uh, that's fine, we'll get into that later. Is the TSI green and above 20? So we don't have that yet, do we? I keep doing the wrong key. Uh, here, let me do this. This is gonna make it easier. I'll just flip back and forth. And no, all right, so I thought that was gonna work. If, uh, if I go like this, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, yeah, okay, there we go. So we have an ERI. Good. We have a buy block down here. That's another one. We don't even have that on the ERI, the checklist yet. But we do have a bullish engulfing candle. So we'll go to, uh, we'll go over here. Sorry, guys. Uh, we have, we're waiting on this. We're going we're gonna to load the signal line. We're going to load these other ones. But we have bullish engulfing. Yes, we do. Is candle body at support? It was at support on the support line there. So that's another check. This Sol trade is looking great. And let's see what else we want to look at. I was see. Uh, okay, we're going to look at all these other things here. We might have a rocket. Let's turn the rocket on. I don't know yet, but it's, uh, well, it, the, the rocket's dependent on the, the moving averages. So let's add our EMAs. 
Lots of different moving averages. I like the moving average exponential. And I'm going to put that on there twice because we need like a 21, which is that orange line. And I like a 50 on there. Those are my two EMAs that we rely on. And I'm going to make that one green, which is what we always use. Okay, so the rocket signal is not firing because it's not on the EMAs. So we'll go get back to that later. Anyway, so uh, how about that? Um, so we're at so three out of 21 already. There's a couple more things in here that we can look at and I'm gonna pull up those other signals, but we have our TSI. Once this goes green, that will be another one. And um, so this, this RSI Pro, by the way, this is so new, we don't have it on the trade success checklist. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of that so that we can add that in. That is a, another one that is very strong and bullish. Okay, so with that in mind, um, this RSI shows bullish divergence. So, so you know, let, let's say this. We, we actually have two signals on here. This is a five out of 21. And so at this point, it is ready to buy. Uh, the rest of these, we're just kind of waiting for them to come along. But uh, if we go in and add our signal line, you might be saying, do I need all these different indicators? Uh, you know, this is um, the more of them you have lined up, the better. So it's just a matter of how much do you like your money? And so with that, uh, if you have more of these line up, then that's better. Okay, I'm also gonna put on my crypto screener and take a look at that. And there was one other thing I was gonna add here, but uh, we'll wait on that. So basically uh, the screener is still all red. We don't wanna actually show that. That's showing um, uh, that the markets haven't fully recovered yet. So let me turn that off. I'm gonna turn on my ATR, that's still bearish. The Bollinger Bands, we're definitely going to look at that. That's very, actually, that's a great signal too, uh, because the lower Bollinger Bands, let's talk about that for a second. Um, now, normally we're looking at the upper Bollinger Bands. Now, this is our moder modified Bollinger Band Pro. If you download the free Bollinger Bands, the problem is it's using the wrong settings. We use a different type of setting, which is very uh, accurate here. I'll just turn off the order blocks. And you can see when it's touching the upper Bollinger Bands, typically it's a good sell point to come back down. I'll turn off the moving averages since we're below those just to keep the chart cleaner. And I'll turn off the uh, ERI Pro for a moment and, um, and and also that rocket here for just a moment. So basically at the tops of these, but also at the bottoms of these, look at the bottom of the Bollinger Band. When it touched the green, that means it's oversold. We pushed up higher all the way to the upper Bollinger Band. Here's a case in point and an excellent example. Uh, my good friend, Steve Nissen, taught me that you know these Bollinger Bands, when they hit the extremes, they often revert to the other side, okay? So here's a good example of that. And let me just do another screenshot so we can zero in on this. Uh, does that, can you see that? So basically we came down here and uh, touched the lower Bollinger Band. And then we came up to the, came right back to the top of the Bollinger Band. And then we reverted back down. So it was an up down. So here, touched the green, went up to the top Bollinger Band and then came back down to the lower Bollinger Band. Well, these things can extend for a while, but look at this. Yesterday, when we breached past the Bollinger Band, that was another example of extreme selling, which is why this is such a great buy signal. And I would imagine we do go higher from here. Uh, it's looking very bullish, you guys. I like these, these setups the more I look at them here today. And I'm going to do another screenshot of this because we're going to add that to the trade success checklist because we're always improving this to give you guys more tools to win in these markets. Okay. But do you see this coming down, breaking below that lower Bollinger Band? If it had closed below it, it would have put a, a vertical green line on the chart, which also signifies a buy zone. So, um, you know, in reality, uh, we have two additional things on that buy su success checklist. And with our signal line, this is not looking bullish, so we'll hide that. But when this crosses over to green, it's another bullish signal. And there's another one in there called the trend indicator that we don't need to look at now. I'll try to simplify things. So the four biggest ones we use, and the first one, hence the name, is the early reversal indicator. So that ERI or the ERI Pro, let's see, this is now hidden, so I'm gonna have to delete some things off here. So, but that's the simplest one. The first one I look for is that ERI Pro, the bullish engulfing, very bullish signs here. Guys, I, I would say Saul is a buy here. Uh, the TSI is about to go green. The RSI is green. The next thing we want to do is look at it weekly because the signals do also work on the weekly. This isn't ready yet. And so that tells me it's more of a short-term swing on Solana. We do have this big heavy sell block right above. 
So I would suggest maybe thinking taking profits up in this hundred and sixty dollar range, some some profits at least until we start to see you know uh, more of our signals come green on the weekly time frame. But certainly we can push up higher for a nice swing trade uh, in this area. Okay, so hopefully that covers it, and uh, we can talk about some other coins if you guys have some other coins you want to look at here. And let me jump back over to chat. I see some more chats coming in. All right, so that covers Solana, and uh, you just traded the UVIX, all right? Only every once in a while, otherwise. All right, Barry, interesting. Uh, h and has been solidly holding up as well. Alex, yeah, we just talked about that. Uh, the radar, okay, thank you, Perry. We'll look at uh, we'll look at the radar next. Thanks for the reminder. Bitcoin, ETH, and Sol, yep. And um, Perry saying, almost fell for the double your coin scam years ago. Yeah, and uh, so basically what they do is they'll take a video of an influencer like the Winklevosses or the Winklevi, as you call them in aggregate. I believe that would be correct. The Winklevi, uh, the um, Michael Saylor, uh, you know, Elon. If you see any influencer coming on, you know, maybe the next one's Mark Cuban, you know, and they, they'll take a video of them speaking, which is an, a real video, and they'll wrap it. They'll put up a new video a channel, a YouTube channel, and they'll wrap it with all kinds of links and things to go here. And, and so the influencer has no idea this is happening. It's a total scam. There's no way to get your coins back, so don't fall for it. The newer version, as I said, is they now have the AI version of these. They've cloned Elon and Michael Saylor so that, and you, if you look closely enough, you can tell they're glitchy. It's, it's like, it's not, something's not right. So at any rate, don't fall for it. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right, let's jump over to the radar. So the other the other um, uh, signal indicator that we have is called the radar. We invented the radar, by the way, at, after the market cycle top in 2021, where we were bullish and then the markets just dropped like a stone. And we wondered how do we alert people because that's something we need to know. So we invented a, and they need to know. So we invented a multi time frame radar. And let's see, I'm just gonna search for it. and. Let's see the radar screener. I think that's the right one. These are all invite only. You can't get them without going to cryptomastery.org and getting it signed up. So the radar, here's the bottom line. If it's all red, stay out. If it's all green, get in. Um, this is showing early signs of strength, but overall bearish <clears throat> sentiment on the radar. So how do you read this? And, and now you can change these if you're a day trader, swing trader, if you want to come other under the settings and you can change this. I have mine on for daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly right in here, but you can change those. When I'm day trading, I have it on a three minute, five minute, 15 minute and an hourly. Okay, so that's different. Here we're bullish on the daily, but we're bearish on the weekly, monthly and quarterly. These are based on a, modified stochastics oscillator, which is a lot of what the institutions trade with and the programmatic trading happens. I've been watching these when they all turn green or red, you can see immediate price, price movements and program, programmatic buying and selling. So empirically confirming that's what they run on. Joe is a the creator is Joe, Joe's a professional trader has been doing this 25 years. He knows. So um, um, as with anything, there are exceptions. But what this tells me is we have more bullish pressure on Solana, but on the weekly, monthly, three month, not so much. So I would probably be wise to take profits in this range here. I would, you know, I want to see get above a support like a 21 and 50 day move EMA, EMA. But as we talked about in our other classes, this is like ice. Right now we're under the ice. So here's another level of thickness. You know, when you're below the ice, you're drowning. So below that green line, the 50 week, 50 day EMA rather, uh, 50 period EMA, depends on the time frame you're trading on, you're below that, you're bearish. And it's like being underwater. You can come up and you get through the thin ice, but then you hit your head on the thick ice, drowning, pop your head above the ice, but you get sucked back down, drowning, drowning. Finally, get back above the ice. And, you know, then we're back in the bullish mode. But once we cross and fall back below the ice, that's going to act as resistance. So we're coming up to this. And now we have this big sell block. So what that tells me is, as a prudent trader, uh, I would add a sell alert uh, right about in here, about 154, right? And uh, and I'm going to say here, oops, I should want to do there. 
okay. What happened here, guys? Let me do this. There we go. Uh, price crossing up. And I'm going to say TP sell, take profits. I'll sell some. And uh, you know, take this is time to be taking profits, you guys. You might say I'm a long term trader. Well, uh, lots of people turn into long term traders when market goes down 30, 40%, you know, and you're going to wish you'd taken some profits. So we're, we're going to have some resistance here. It's, I would rather take profit here and buy back higher in the strength once we're back above the 21 to 50 day EMAs, because then we have chances to go higher, higher. But, uh, you know, we don't have, let's see where our order blocks are. We don't have any order blocks uh, below it just yet. We could look on a shorter time frame, but uh, that wasn't the question. Let me get back to the radar, you guys. Okay, so so daily bullish pressure, the rest of it bearish. I'd be cautious taking profits along the way on that. Let's go to Bitcoin and see what that looks like here. So we have, now in the quarterly time frame, Bitcoin's still bullish. Daily bullish, weekly, monthly, not so much. That means we could chop around for a while. And, um, you know, look, this candle, this candle could kind of go either way. It's this nice little dead cat bounce. This is, a lot of this is short covering. All right, we have this acting as resistance here. So I'm a little bit cautious. If we get a late day pump, uh, I'm going to put in some sell limit orders on my sell, sell some because it likely we're, we're not going to rock it a higher out of here. I don't believe, uh, you know, if, if, if we saw an early reversal indicator here, that'd be great. If we saw it on uh, TSI going green, that would be great. Again, total market cap, uh, but just not ready yet. Let's look at ETH, see if that's, but we already know Sol is outperforming Sol dominance and Sol BTC. So it's worth watching those. Um, the Sol USD, uh, sorry, we already covered that, ETH. And so ETH also, um, you know, I'm looking at the radar, but lots of Sol block above. And I'm not clear why. Uh, I know there's been a lot of outflows on the ETH, uh, sorry, the ETH ETF. It hasn't performed well, a lot of outflows there. And here's the thing, this downtrending channel uh, just got uh, evaporated. I'm gonna widen that channel here, but this this is pretty, not looking so good on ETH. I don't know. I mean, on the one hand, it hit that lower part of the Bollinger Bands, which should be stabilizing a bit, but this is a lot of sell pressure. This is, or, this is money flow leaving ETH ETFs bleeding out. Uh, I would say I would buy ETH down here in the two, 1900s, around 2000. Great buy on ETH. But for now, I would uh, hold, sell part. You know, I would sell some if I had some and buy it back lower. I think having it at the moment. Okay. Uh, any other questions, you guys? I think we should probably wrap up. Timing wise, we've gone, we've gone really long, you guys. Sorry. So I got to end this up whether your recording takes forever. Uh, so, all right, guys, that's all. Um, if you'd like to see you watching on YouTube or watching any of the clips, hit like and subscribe. We'll do more of these and uh, go to our website, moonstream.io, where you can download your free trade success checklist. Again, if we get a score of three or four or five over 21, you know, that is a signal to buy. And uh, we will be updating this as we always do and improving as we go. So, okay, guys, uh, sit tight, um, be nimble. Mm, I would suggest consolidating positions and overweighting stronger ones that are showing strength like Solana, not financial advice, do your own research, follow our signals, go get a copy of the Crypto Mastery indicators at cryptomastery.org slash pro if you don't already have them. And uh, that is my highest recommendation. I can't apparently type in the, okay, something was not working there, cryptomastery.org slash pro. We have a lifetime offer in here and uh, you can get access to these. Uh, the prices should have gone up already. We haven't had the bandwidth. We've had uh, a number of uh, uh, things happening here with um, flood, our, our team overseas dealing with floods and internet issues and Mike and I at the Bitcoin conference. We haven't had time to raise the prices on this, but that lifetime offer is going to be going up uh, for these pro indicators. These are the best I've ever used. They really do give us the backbone when we see confluence. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's no red line, green line, single indicator. But uh, here's a great example and cheat sheet. Uh, and by the way, this coin, Caspa, did break out and showed a lot of strength. So when these indicators line up, that is a signal to get in and get some profits. And it also is great at telling you when to take profits. Because it's upper Bollinger Band, this coin, let's see if I can open this image, it shot up above here 
hit this upper Bollinger band and then it sold off a bit. So, but we caught it early with the ERI, with a buy order block, with the rocket signal and using that trade success checklist. Look at this, we had the, e, the TSI green, we had everything else going green and the bullish divergence. So when we, when these do align, you can have some great trades that you would not, wouldn't have otherwise known to get into. And uh, this can easily pay for itself many, many times over, especially with the lifetime offer. Go to cryptomastery.org slash pro. Can't recommend these enough. And uh, also, if you'd like to join our M3 Active Trader class with 24-hour access, 24 hour access to me, uh, you can go over to moonstream.io slash m3. Okay, guys, that's all I have time for. Uh, join us tomorrow uh, for a retire for Active Trader and Thursday for our Retire Rich class, which is more for longer-term traders looking to buy the next Netflix and Amazons. Uh, if you are watching and would like to book a one-on-one -on -one time with me, you're really interested in coaching, any one-on-one -on -one work, you can find out more at our main website, moonstream.io. And I don't know why this won't open here. And I did have somebody reach out and book a time with me last week. And uh, we're working together on one on one. You can do that right here. There is a link to work with me and you can watch a short video to see if this might be for you. And a little box will appear down below. We can book a call. It's a very no pressure conversation just to see if it makes sense, if I can help you. But uh, I, in many cases, if not all, I can. All right. Thanks, everybody. I will look forward to talking to you next week. Bye.